Hey what's up guys, welcome to today's video. So we're going to make red dot covers and camera covers. We have to use various supplies, so we, here's a huge thing of plexiglass. You obviously don't have to get one this big. Um, try to find one that's enough so that you can cover all your sights and cameras you want to cover. This is the only one my local store had. You can get some at Home Depot for cheaper than stores like Ace. This one was around $13, but it's a very big amount. Obviously you don't need this much. I'd recommend just maybe like a fourth of this, if that. You could probably get it under $5 easily at Home Depot. Just ask for a plexiglass. So you guys want to make sure is it's thick enough to protect BBs. Alright, so you guys are going to need some supplies. So first up, obviously the plexiglass sheet. And then a pin to mark where you're going to cut. So I'm using a Dremel with a tip for um, PVC pipe thin metal and sometimes a wood. So picture that. It comes in a pack of two. I just got this from a local Home Depot or Ace anywhere has it. Next up is either tape or some sort of one-sided sticky tape to stick the lenses that you create to the cameras and red dots. Or you could use super glue or Loctite in this case. You also might need some tips on the Dremel to sand down the plastic after you cut it out. Last but certainly not least, all of the red dots and the cameras that you're going to put your new lenses on. I got a couple T1 replicas, a run cam, and two GoPros. Okay, so first up, you want to get your plexiglass out and your first camera or red dot you're going to make a lens cover for. So first up, you want to get your marker out. And then pick, I would usually pick a corner, obviously not the middle. Pick a nice easy corner. So once you have your corner picked out, you want to take the actual red dot, put it onto the plexiglass, take your marker and actually trace a circle. Okay guys, so once you get your circle drawn, you're ready to cut it out with the Dremel. No, not actually mark on the actual glass. There's usually a little protective sheet that they have both sides to so make sure to draw on the sheet that they give you on top of the glass. So for easier time, I am gonna use a Dremel for this, but you can use a hacksaw or some other type of tool to actually carve out from the plexiglass. I tried a acrylic sheet cutter, I'll show you in a second. I tried one of these but it wasn't successful. It's for actually marking the plexiglass or cutting out very small sheets. So in this case we're actually gonna have to use a Dremel or a hacksaw. I'm gonna use a Dremel for this case but I have done this with a hacksaw and it just takes a quite bit more time but it can be done. So if you do happen to have a Dremel and just simply cut around the black dot you created, make sure not to get inside the dot. Always kind of try to go outside and then kind of work your way in. You can always sand away on the outside or cut more. Cutting less is always more. Okay guys, so next you want to take all of your cameras and red dots and make circles or squares for them. And then we'll go to the Dremel and get them cut out. I wanted to say before you start Dremeling, you actually want to put a blanket down underneath where you're working. I'm working outside, so better not to get plastic everywhere. So once I'm done, I can obviously just pick up all the pieces and throw in the trash rather than either sweeping it up or leaving it on the ground. So once you get to this point, well, you want to completely sand down the plastic so it's flush with the site, so it's easier to do their next step. Also, when you're jumping, please wear um, eye protection. The plastic does get everywhere, and you wouldn't want to get in your eyes. Okay, guys, so once you get it sanded down flush to how you want it on the site, we have a couple options for the next step. First, you could Loctite it. This is the easiest way and also the most efficient to lock it down without coming off. There's a downside to this is it's harder to take off if the plastic does get shot out. You'd have to heat it up with a heat gun or a hair dryer or something to take off the plastic and then put another one on. You can also use electrical tape or duct tape around the site. This one's probably the easiest one but it doesn't lock it on as efficiently as other methods and it doesn't look as good. So the next option is a one-sided tape. So in this case we have like a adhesive on one side and kind of a velcro side on the other sides. 
So for the first time, I actually going to use this Velcro tape that I have. Um, I thought it would kind of give it a unique look, and it's um, very strong, but also easy to take off if the plastic does get shot out. Before you add your lens to your sight, I would um, recommend taking um, like a towel or shirt or preferably microfiber towels like here, and then wiping down the sight and the plastic before you apply it on. So this is the end product of the first red dot. It's a very unique look, um, probably not desired by most with the kind of Velcro look on the outside, but I think it's kind of unique and cool. Gives it kind of like a rugged look, and then here's the plastic. So first one down. Okay, so once you drum it out the piece and sand it down to the shape you want, you actually want to take what you're mounting it to, so in this case it's a run cam, and just kind of put it on and then kind of just keep sanding down until you get a, a perfect flush fit. Once you get to the size you want, you want to lightly sand it down so that it doesn't have rugged edges. Okay, here's my end product. Obviously, it doesn't have to be perfect because no one's really going to see it. It's just a function of protecting your camera or red dot. So, obviously, perfection is not the key here. It's just um, functionality. Okay, guys, so this is our next finished product. Again, not perfect, but it is very functional. That's all we care about. And plus, when you cover it with the tape, you won't really see the rigid or um, uneven edges. So it's pretty flush now, so now we just need to move on to the next site. Okay, so we got the dremeling and then the um, sanding for the most part, or I guess shaping, to the GoPro Hero 4. Um, it's almost flush, but I'm going to do low sanding setting on the dremel to just get a little bit more cleaner and have a better flush fit. Okay guys, so that's about the uh, finished product for the Hero 4. Obviously the edges are a little bit rigid and it's not perfectly flush or shaped, but again it doesn't matter, it's just functionality rather than looks. Okay, so that's the last one. Obviously the GoPro Hero 3 has like a little kind of bigger casing around the actual glass and lens part, so that's why this is smaller than the black part you see. Okay guys, so once you got your dremeled out, plexiglass, sanded down, and getting it fitting flush, this is the next steps you're going to take. So obviously we could use super glue electrical duct tape or some set of other double-sided tape or in this case it's like a velcro adhesive tape any of these options work or any others work as long as you get that to stick on there when you're running around so for the red dots I am going to use the um, velcro kind of adhesion tape because these get shot out the most and this is the easiest to take off also the strongest and it gives it kind of a unique look don't forget to wipe down your plexiglass and your red dot before applying it onto the red dot with one of the three methods. Make sure to use a microfiber towel is preferred. A regular towel t-shirt is fine, but preferred is a microfiber towel. So this is our end product of the other red dot, the T1 replica. As you can see, um, even though it wasn't perfected or um, flush exactly and had some round edges with this Velcro tape, it actually makes it look pretty good. Okay, so for each one of the cameras, I'm just going to drop four dots of a Loctite on each one of the corners. Make sure to apply the Loctite on the black corners on the GoPros, where I'm pointing the little blue cap. Because if you apply it to the actual glass, you don't want that, obviously, Loctite on your, your lens or your glass. So apply it to the case portion of the GoPro, where it's black. Once you put it on the four corners, apply the plexiglass carefully. Make sure not to get the glue into the vision of the lens. As long as it's not in the vision of the lens, you're good to go. So for the run cam, I actually ended up using electrical tape. 
just in case it gets shot out it's easier to take off and I think the um, Loctite wouldn't work very well because of the small surface and then I also ended up not using the velcro um, tape because the lens is a 16 times so if the little hairs get in the way and get it out of focus that's uh, not ideal <laughs> 